Hello, Scott Thomas here with Stewardship Matters, here to share some powerful insights for you and your family. I've heard it said that if you pass along value without passing values, it's a recipe for disaster. Did you know there's more than one inheritance, but rather five key inheritances? So the first is financial, the most obvious, the easiest to measure. The second is intellectual capital. This is the ideas and the concepts you receive in store. Next is relational capital. Family, friends, network, it's wonderful to see the thriving in families and caring that provides the richest life. Next is character. This is work ethic, purpose, drive. Personally for me, getting the answer of no as a child motivated me greatly. Lastly, spiritual capital provides wisdom, perspective, and influence towards the unseen or the not obvious. There are some driving elements for thriving families, and here are some common denominators. They're intentional, developing mission, receiving input, making decisions together, recognition of a greater purpose, implementing a game plan, and continuing the journey together. Next, I'd like to share a tool called Wealth Languages. It's especially good for family and business relationships. So these words are very neutral in meaning. They provide some real insights to communication around wealth. And studies tell us that the biggest risk to your wealth is poor communication. In fact, over 90% of the wealth earned will be lost by the third generation. So we look at these areas, we look at stability. Obviously, this is something uh, they like CDs, they like annuities, they like the refrigerator full, they want to know that the bills are paid and they're living very, very conservatively. Uh, the person with it lives in the moment. This is the one who's the most fun at the party. They love to just invite people into fun and spend money on moments and experiences and they're always a lot of fun. Next is the futurist over to the right and this is the spreadsheet person that is very meticulous about saving and moving that saving needle very methodically towards goals. Uh, last is the opportunity, the upper right. This is the person who takes on much more risk, they want impact, they want something exciting and they're looking for those bigger payoffs. So there's not a right or a wrong answer about this, but it's really important that you understand some things. So let me ask you an important question here. So if you're married, you have a partner, you're also gonna ask this question. So if you had significant extra money, where would you spend it and why? Let me repeat that. If you had extra money to spend, where would you spend it and why? Think about that. Now, if you're married or a partner, where would they spend it and why? A lot of times people aren't on the same quadrant. It's not a good or a bad thing here. Again, it allows for more discussion to work together effectively, understand each other better. So what is your primary wealth language as I ask that question? And do you have a secondary one as you look at the way you spend your time and money what might be your secondary one? Dave Ramsey's study asked, what was the most common denominator in great marriages? The answer, they discussed money on a regular basis. So if you'd like to talk about your different areas of capital, you like to talk about the wealth languages, uh, you just like to you know, get an outside perspective on how can you move the needle for your children and your grandchildren. Love to have that conversation. Reach out to me, Scott at StewardshipMatters.net or 407-644-9411 extension 2.